In this video, we're not gonna be vlogging because I wanna talk about if it fits your macros versus clean eating and why it's all a load of nonsense. See, the word diet originally comes from the Greek word dieta, which means a manner of living. It doesn't mean good foods, bad foods, clean foods, dirty foods, high carb, low carb, paleo, intermittent fasting, back loading, front loading, I could go on. But again, if a diet has a specific name and it's not your name, it's probably not the best approach for you. So let's look at the science. Let's see what the science says when it comes to flexible versus rigid dieting. In 1999, Smith and others looked at a flexible versus rigid dieting strategies and a relationship with adverse behavioral outcomes. And they found a strong correlation between those which use a flexible dieting approach and the absence of overeating, lower body mass, and lower levels of depression and anxiety. They also found that those who were consciously counting calories were more likely to overeat and increase body mass. So next study, because that's 99, I know what you're gonna say. Oh, that's an old study. Well, in 2002, Stuart and others looked at rigid first flexible dieting and they associated them with eating disorders in non-obese women. And what they found was that individuals who engaged in rigid dieting strategies reported symptoms of an eating disorder, mood disturbances, and excessive concern over body size and image. However, the flexible dieting strategies were not highly associated with BMI, eating disorder symptoms, mood disturbances, or concerns with body size. Hmm. I know, 2002 is still old, so. In 2011, Mule and others looked at food cravings and how it mediated the relationship between rigid and flexible dieting. After surveying 616 people, they found that food cravings fully mediated the inverse relationship between rigid control and dieting success. Contrarily, flexible control predicted dieting success independently of food cravings because you're not eliminating foods you enjoy. But these are two studies I wanna look in a little bit more detail. Cause it's newer. This one was in 2013 and it looked at 106 women who had been on a commercial, can't say who it is, slimming organization for at least six months. And what they found was that rigid restraint correlates with a range of preoccupying cognitions and attentional bias to food and shape related stimuli. However, those which use a flexible restraint, despite that they had an impaired working memory, it predicted better long-term weight loss. Oh, so the flexible dieting actually had better long-term results. But this is the one, this is the study that when it came out, I was extremely excited because they looked at a low calorie diet. This was done in 2012 by Laurie and Cohen and others. And they looked at low calorie diet with or without bread. Yes, grains affect the gains, or do they? So as you can see here, what they did is that the no bread group increased the discrepancy with recommended consumption. And the no bread group had the most dropouts. And here's two things I've highlighted. We're just gonna scroll down and have a look. And here it is. The no bread group significantly increased the number of diet transgressions at 12 weeks, while the bread group experienced no significant changes in diet compliance during the intervention. So the exclusion of bread from the diet may have led to those not sustaining that diet. And they actually did say in the discussion, the reasons for dropping out during the intervention were varied. Nevertheless, the bread exclusion in the no bread group was a significant factor. Therefore, not excluding common everyday foods, such as bread or granola, could mean that you have a lower dropout rate. And what does that mean for you? It means you might be able to sustain your diet. So whenever you're looking at, is it a flexible or clean eating approach? The best diet is the one you can stick to, not me, but you. So don't label foods as good or bad or clean or dirty. And if you like granola, you can eat granola. If you've got any questions or you disagree with anything, please post in the comment section below. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe.